Good morning, everybody. How is everybody doing? Good morning, Dr. Islam. I'm doing fantastic today. Morning. Good. Good, good. Fantastic. Well, uh, this morning I wake up and I realize I'm Irish. And <laughs> <laughs> happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Uh, all the good luck of Irish to you and all the listeners. Uh, and uh, we are welcoming this morning um, with uh, as a continued version uh, of uh, with Ryan Simones and of course Juliana Snyder, who is the co-host of this um, event. So, Juliana, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and introduce Ryan's once again? Yeah. So, my name is Juliana Scheidhauer. I'm the owner of Combat 360, um, a firm that helps with making um, sure that small businesses are most effective and productive as possible. Um, we have with us uh, Ryan. Um, he is a financial, you know, um, he does financial consulting and coaching um, with families in particular. And um, he's here to sh share with us about his story of being a young entrepreneur and uh, business person. Okay, very well. Ryan, you want to introduce yourself to our audience? Absolutely. Hey guys, welcome. Um, pleasure to be on the call today. Thank you so much for the invitation. I loved um, the last session we had. So this is our second session today. And my uh, just a quick introduction to my story. I am uh, 21 years old. I got started in business from a very young age. Finished my undergrad when I was 18. And I've been working in the financial industry for the past three and a half years. I'm fully licensed and I'm getting coached by a gentleman who's got about 30 years of experience. And um, we're growing our agency across the United States. Um, Located in Virginia right now, we have a couple places, North Carolina and Tennessee, and uh, we'll continue to grow. And I'm very excited to be on this call today. Fantastic, fantastic. Juliana, uh, why don't you take it uh, from this point on? Yeah, okay, thank you. So Ryan, you were talking about your um, experience and story a little bit beforehand. Um, you wanna go ahead and continue your story? Absolutely, yeah, I can jump right in and kind of share it my story up to this point, and then um, feel free to ask any questions along the way. Um, so guys, I, I got started in business because I saw the need for um, managing my own time and money. Um, somebody, one of my professors in college asked me, he said, Ryan, time and money aside, what would you do with your life? And that, that question prompted me on this journey to think, okay, everybody in, in the United States that's an employee is working for time and money. Right? We, we trade our time for money every day, right? And I was like, if I can get to a point one day where I could have you know, unlimited time and money from working in a business to where I leverage you know, income, I leverage money, I leverage you know, a team of people that work you know, with me um, to the point where I can step aside and figure out what my true passion is in life. That's, that's what excited me about this journey. Um, I don't know if, if our listeners are, you know, are religious in any way, but I, I believe that, you know, we're all created to have relationship with, with God, relationship with other people. And I believe that work was also created. Um, but back when work was created, it wasn't created for the sake of making money. It was, it was created as a way to glorify God, but also find our passion, find our calling. But now we live in this economy where money is extremely important. And finance is extremely important. We live in this economy where we have to make money and pay our bills. And so um, I realized, I was like, if I can get into a business where I can coach people, provide clear financial vision um, for families that have a lot of things going on in their lives. They have children that they're keeping up with, sports activities, they have church events. If I can provide them that peace of mind, that clear financial vision, and then also provide other people that have entrepreneurial backgrounds an opportunity to get fully trained and licensed in our agency to do work virtually. Um, I, I'm all in. So that was my journey kind of up to this point. Um, I wanted to finish my undergrad um, pretty quickly just so I can start working. So I did that um, really innovative ways. Um, finished that. So the past three and a half years I've been working, I actually just got this new coach about six, seven months ago. And since getting this new gentleman that's coaching me for the past six, seven months, uh, my income over the past maybe – four or five months has been about $50,000 um, just over this four or five month period. And we're looking to make that over six figures by September. And the way we're doing it is really helping people connect them to different companies and products and solutions that really help them get on track with their finances and have less stress about their money. And so 
really a phenomenal. Um, I'm very blessed to be in this industry and blessed to have this opportunity and excited to be on this call today. I hope that's a little bit of a little bit about my story and my passion. Um, I really want to help people worry less about their money so they can really enjoy life and and work on finding what is their passion, what is their calling, and have the freedom to pursue those things more. That's awesome. Dr. Islam, do you have any comments on that or kind of some insight? Uh, no, I think uh, Ryan said it right. It's, it's not only about money, but every business should uh, uh, be profitable. And that's what uh, money is very important for business and financial side of it is very important for business. Um, even if they're for profit or not for profit, without the money, uh, the business don't run. So first, first and foremost focus of the business should be profitability. Now, profitability do not uh, directly relate to money. Profitability of uh, there is other things involved with this, but uh, you know, making money should be the uh, focus of the business, and that's why we call it business. But we have many other things that uh, is involved uh, when we are doing business. And one of these is to do social good. And the more social good we want to do, the more money we need to make. And if we have more money, then there is a lot of good things we can do in this world and help a lot of people to grow. And similar thing about um, young entrepreneurs who are building the future of business that we can grow. Uh, if we can make money, uh, we can do that and uh, help people to go in financially. And one of the challenges that you can see, and uh, Ryan, you can um, most probably support that same argument, is that um, uh, young entrepreneurs face many challenges. The most uh, difficult one is to coming up with the money to grow their business, uh, especially uh, because it's the uh, capital they need. And there is uh, a lot of uh, focus on this by SBA and other organizations, but uh, in that space, we can help. We as a community in young entrepreneurs building the uh, future of business can help and corporations who are already established can help. And uh, that's what we are trying to do. Connect the corporations, connect the young entrepreneurs, connect the industry expert to a, a place where they can gather together and build the future of business. Yeah, I think that is, um, you know, exactly on point where, you know, we're able to, you know, be profitable, but also help and uh, provide social good. I think that's very important, especially for businesses nowadays. Um, so we're talking about finance and things, and, and I guess in current events, um, we've been given like a stimulus check recently, right? What, like, advice would you have for people, you know, with their stimulus check coming in, you know, what to invest in or, you know, what to do with that stimulus check? That's a great question. We're talking about just your personal financial situation. Is that right, Juliana? Right, right. Yeah. A lot of people are getting, you know, tax returns. I don't know if you guys, uh, if you have a family and children, the tax, um, the income tax credit for your children, you, should, you guys should research it. I don't want to speak much on it because I'm not a tax advisor, but they're actually giving people, the, the, the new bill that's been passed actually gives people a monthly income as well um, in certain situations. So uh, if you're out there listening, just make sure to look into some things if you have children and just look into how that works with this new stimulus package. Um, but what, people who are receiving a lump sum stimulus check um, or a tax return right now, this kind of season, um, I usually recommend you know building, um, I talk about a financial house and so making sure if you have debt, figure out you know which debt you have and interest rates you have on those, figure out which ones to pay off first, build up an emergency fund, and then um, you know, invest into, if you're young, you know, and your income's at certain points, you know, it's good to invest in things like a Roth IRA and good mutual funds, um, and just start kind of getting that, getting that going. I mean, that's what, I, that's what I'm doing with mine, and um, you know, it's really very situational, but I'd say definitely treat it as if you don't have it, as far as don't go spend it, you know, figure out, hey, I've got this goal, and I want to get there faster so I can kind of bump start my, my plan for the year, if that makes sense. So definitely just pretend like you don't have it. So don't go out and spend a lot of money and go shopping. I mean, have a little bit of fun, um, but definitely keep that balance. Um, that's a great question. For sure. Yeah. Because um, I know a lot of people out there are like, you know, they 
want to spend their money and um, you know maybe some people want to invest it especially as young entrepreneurs um, you know maybe invest into your business or um, you know like you said working on that debt making sure you know that they're um, you know planning ahead and mitigating some of those risks that may come in the future for sure absolutely and it's definitely something that you know I don't want to give advice you know without being specific so you know something we talk about on a one-on-one -on -one basis um, just want to throw that out there. But yes, it's very much a challenge for young entrepreneurs. There's, there's really two ways most young entrepreneurs get started in business. One is by raising a lot of capital, you know, which sounds like you guys are very equipped to help kind of work through those conversations. You know, and that's, you know, starting with a lot of capital. So like, think about, you know, you purchase like a McDonald's franchise, right? You have to have like $1.1 million to get started in that, you know, or you can really work via just starting out with sweat equity. You know, that's kind of what, what I call, and that's what I did. I didn't have a lot of money getting started, but my goal was to keep my overhead low and just get licensed and start building my, I, I called it sweat equity, just building connections, building relationships, starting to find leads and kind of build up your business that way. Um, so there's really two ways to do it. And you know, your, your goal is to always increase your bottom line as a business. Um, and you should, you should always have your biggest motive in business being to impact people. You know, if you're just money motivated, I don't think you'll, you will last long in business. Um, I do think you need to have a passion to do what you do because people will see through that. Um, but if you have that passion along with the business knowledge and the savvy that you guys can provide to your clients, uh, I think that's a very powerful combination. You can do a lot of good and really impact a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So I was um, recently learning about you know, some of the innovative and entrepreneurial things that are happening today, just because you know, traditional business has changed a lot, um, especially during the pandemic. Things that used to be, you know, the status quo has changed. And so, you know, it's interesting to see like um, how, how people can invest or to raise that capital for, you know, starting a business nowadays versus in the future. Um, yeah, but then also people wanting to start their own businesses or doing freelancing things, putting in, like you were saying, Ryan, sweat equity um, into building their business. Um, so I guess there's there's a lot of different options out there for you know people who want to do different things. Um, you know, some things don't require a lot of you know, capital, and it's not capital intensive. Um, but also just like the industry today is very, um, I guess fluctuating and so you want to be nimble and uh, flexible with what you know the economy is doing and what um you know the industry is doing so um i think what you had you know having a low in you know overhead um is really important um and, and to really um you know make sure that your finances all, are all squared away um before you're you know you just go right into business so i think that's really important to really think through those those foundational things Absolutely. Yep. Um, so I guess, um, what are some other challenges or advice that you would um, give to young entrepreneurs, you know, as a business person yourself? I think definitely keeping up with, you know, you, it's like a pro and con of being self-employed, being an entrepreneur. You, you have a lot of freedom, mm -hmm. but you also have to have the ability to be self-disciplined, you know, I think the biggest, most important um, thing that I've done is you seek out a coach and a mentor that is in your industry that's very specific to what you do and get on some sort of weekly, daily accountability with them um, and have them push you to, to kind of do what they've done, but also avoid mistakes that they've made. Um, I think that is for, for everybody we're talking to in this Young Entrepreneurs Call, I think that's a very specific recommendation, I would say, find a mentor that I think that is the reason I've gotten to where I'm at today is because mm -hmm. of all the mentors in my life. You know, I've got the guitar behind me. I've definitely had a guitar teacher. I had I play, played soccer growing up in high school, I had a soccer coach. He was from Brazil, was an awesome guy, um, you know, college coach. He got me through college faster. You know, now I have a business coach. I have a pastor, my father, you know, just different men, and different influences in my life. Right. But specifically in business. Find someone that you can mentor, be mentored by. If you have to pay them, that's very much worth the investment. You know, my mentor has an incentive to pour into me because when I help clients, he actually is paid, um, which is incredible because that means he has a vested interest in my financial success. Um, but find someone like that to where they have an interest in your success 
Um, and then just have a good balance of, you know, living your life, right? But also being self-disciplined to work a lot. Um, and, and, you know, I always tell people it's creating your, you want to create your, your work around your life, not your life around your work, um, but still work and not just take advantage of all the freedom you have, right? So it's definitely this hard balance as a self-employed entrepreneur, um, but it's very, very exciting journey. I would never trade it for anything else. Um, and it's definitely a blessing. Yep. So I think uh, that that's really good advice that you have there, Ryan. Um, in terms of looking for a coach, you know, a lot of young entrepreneurs, um, you know, have a lot of ideas and a lot of, um, you know, creative uh, passions that they have. And a lot of times they uh, maybe listen less to advice and mentors. And so what advice do you have um, for looking at specific mentors or like what criteria should people be looking at when they're, they're picking their mentor or coach? That's a great question. I think it's very specific to what, you, what you're wanting to go into. Um, you need to be able to connect with them. You need to be able to, you know, view their life outside of just their business and say, do I want to be like them? You know, is that somebody I want to aspire towards? You're, you're never going to have, you should never buy somebody's dreams and make them your own. You know, so you have your own goals, your own passions, your own dreams, but if you have someone that has the same lifestyle, the same mindset, um, and especially that has a growth mindset, you know, someone that has, you know, that stretches, I think the biggest thing would be looking for somebody that stretches your vision because you can't stretch your own vision by yourself. You need someone to help you stretch that. You need a group of people to help you stretch that. So for me, when I was looking at, you know, I had a, I had a coach that helped me kind of get started and he helped me with the fundamentals. And then I have a coach who's got 32 years experience now. So I switched. Um, so I have a coach who's got a lot of credibility um, in the in the industry, a lot of knowledge on specific client situations, but also business knowledge on how to grow and duplicate. You know, he's got 15 to 16 offices he's promoted. And he's, and I'm like, hey, I want to be like you in 10 years from now, right? So can you walk me through how to get there? You know, and so just finding somebody that's got that growth mindset and just really stretches you. It makes you feel uncomfortable, you know, yeah. and, and creates that sense of urgency in you um, to, to do more and expect more of yourself. Um, I think that would be the best coach, you know, somebody that doesn't always agree with you, you know, somebody that really, but also mm -hmm. someone that does ask you questions and help you process it on your own before just telling you the answers. Um, yeah, I think, you know, having a good coach like you're saying is, you know, really critical um, and important to really, uh, make sure that that relationship is, you know, uh, working because, you know, you don't want to have a coach that, I guess, doesn't understand you and your values as well, um, because you, they may be wanting to coach you in a different direction than what you want to go in. Um, and so you have to be inspired by the coach, you know, themselves and um, because they are the person that you're trying to imitate in, so, in some way. So, yeah. So, Absolutely. Dr. Islam. What, um, what coaches have you had in the past and um, what kind of criteria do you use? Yes, uh, so coaches need coaches too. And uh, mm -hmm. over time, and as, as you know, that I, I finished my coaching training at the University of Miami, professional coach training. And there is must, multiple master coaches there that have helped me over the years. So uh, what Ryan said here is, exactly right. What, what he's saying is not only their experience, not only their all the wins, but there was many uh, learning from the mistakes they made. And that, that, that is also very important in coaching because um, you know the coaches who have made mistakes in the past and that those mistakes, they can make sure that you don't make again or you don't repeat it again. So not only look at their uh, uh, successes, but uh, look at their failure as well. So, uh, and, and the key here is what they learn from it and how they move out of it. And that's uh, very important. So, you know, I work with a couple of coaches from Arizona and they helped me to refocus my uh, 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 mindset. And as you know, I used to be also part of a, a business coaching franchise and uh, multiple business coaches there who helped me to uh, refocus, realign. And they come with, uh, uh, some kind of came with extensive sales coaching background. And we had uh, on a regular basis. So 
uh, there is no coaching that you can do that you can do for one month, two months, or three months, or a uh, small period of time and move on and think that you have made it. Uh, coaching is an ongoing process. And just mm -hmm. like Ryan said, uh, it can be weekly, it can be even daily. Depends upon your need and uh, what you want to do. And, uh, you know, enlist some of the coaches, not only one, maybe multiple of them and mm -hmm. uh, seek out help. And, uh, you know, it's not their dream, it's your dream. This is your goal, your vision. Uh, you just need some help and guidance to uh, get there and the coaches are good at it. Yep. Very good. So, um, Ryan, you, I know you like to work really hard on your business and, you know, and learning and improving yourself. What are, what are some fun things that you do? Um, you, you've mentioned that you like playing guitar. That's a, it's a very loaded question. Um, yeah. I love, I, I'm a, a very active uh, young guy. I love to, um, anything that has to do with the ball, I, I'm pretty passionate about. So I love sports. Yeah. Um, I played soccer growing up. I play basketball and volleyball currently. Um, I have an adult league that I, I do on the weekends for soccer. Um, so definitely do that. Any kind of sport, you know, I've probably played it. Um, guitar, I love to play. I, I do lead some worship. Um, that's probably what I do mostly now, um, just for some small group Bible studies. Um, and uh, yeah, growing up, I did play a little classical guitar, which was exciting. And then, yeah, just being with people. I love outdoors, you know, going on, you know, kayaking trips or hikes. Um, I think it's very important to have a well-rounded life and not just, you know, work. I think it's, you know, when you can, when you can, you know, work out well, you know, have good fitness, you know, drink lots of water, eat well, you know, then you have a good work schedule to where you're very productive. And then you have time in the evening to where you, you get active and, you know, um, use your body. I think it's really, it's exciting. I'm very energized all the time because I feel like just doing those things, it just kind of keeps me going. Um, yeah. But usually I'll make an hour or two a day to, to be pretty active. So that's, that's probably my favorite thing to do if I have time. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Um, can you can you talk about like some of the challenges um, as a young entrepreneur and a business owner of keeping that work life balanced? That is the question. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you if you know of anybody that answers that question well, I think yeah, I'd love to talk to them. I, it's a it's a very hard thing to do. Um, you know, for me as a young man, I, I realized I could work more. Um, I don't have children right now. I'm not married um, yet. And I could put more time into my business. I could be working, you know, 80 to 100 hours a week pretty easily. I could see that. Um, but I do realize that, you know, I have a, a higher life purpose that I'm, I'm striving after. And, you know, to me, work is not everything. You know, money is not everything as much as I love what I do. Um, so I do make time um, just as I stay accountable in my business. I also stay accountable in, you know, my walk with the Lord. I stay accountable in my fitness goals. Um, and basically the way that I've, I've been able to balance that well, I have something I call it a declaration statement. Um, I read it every day and I wrote it out and it's something my, my coach got me to do for business, but I also wrote it out for every area of my life. So I have Kind of my life purpose statement at the, at the top. I'm constantly kind of editing that, you know, as life changes, mm -hmm. that keeps kind of changing. And then I have a you know, section for health and fitness and sports and business. And I, I get very specific in each thing. And I talk about things that I do every day, you know, to get there. So I have kind of like an overall goal and I break it down to like three or four actionable things that I do every week, you know? Mm -hmm. And so just, even if I don't stay super consistent in doing every single thing, just having that kind of reading that every day subconsciously just kind of clicks in me. I'm like, okay, I'm going to kind of have that well-rounded, um, I guess, in all of my life, just be well-rounded and, and, and not just my business. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think a successful business person will be successful in every area of their life, you know, yeah. if they are, if their mindset's in the right place and if they're really truly um, living well. So mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely one of the things that's helped me have that work-life balance is just writing out the things that I want to do consistently because small, consistent things over a long period of time help you get to where you want to go. You know, it's not mm -hmm. about hitting a home run every day. It's not about, you know, it's, I tell my dad every day, it's like, hey, I just got to hit a single, get on base every day, you know, it's a baseball analogy. Um, yeah. 
but so that that's definitely been a, a something that's helped me but I'm always looking for advice as well on, on how to keep that better <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah I think um, what, you, what you're saying about consistency is really important and having those those values you know in front of you you know who you want to be and what you want to do you know is really important um, you know instead of deciding the spur of the moment um, I think that that's really critical um, yeah. but yeah I think as business people we, we kind of all kind of struggle with that you know work-life balance because we're passionate about our business and we love know working but you know remembering that there's more to life than just working and more than to life than just you know your business and, and money so yeah Absolutely. I think that's really great Dr. Yeah. Islam how do you uh, how do you do work-life balance well uh, <coughs> excuse me good question Juliana so before we answer that question let's ask this same question to both of you uh, and you guys are coming up uh, as a entrepreneur, young entrepreneurs. Uh, why do we do business? So, uh, Ryan, why don't you tell me? And then, uh, Juliana, you can tell me as well. Why do we do business for? So the question is, why do we do business? Mm -hmm. Or why we are in business? So for me personally, I think the reason that I decided to do business is I wanted to have uh, more control over my time and my income. Um, I didn't want to have to have somebody tell me when I can and can't do things. I wanted to have the ability to stop in the middle of the day and go, you know, go grab lunch with my mother um, or you know, go out with a good friend, you know, and not have to ask somebody to take that time off, um, you know, and ultimately to have a vehicle that can get me to some, some big dreams that I have and that, that I'm going to be able to accomplish in the next five to 10 years. And so that's probably a quick, short answer, um, as well as just a passion to do what we do and help and serve people. I, I love that as well. Right. Very well. Juliana, so why do, um, yeah. why do we do business and why, why are you in business? Yeah, I think, um, you know, individually, it's very different probably for a lot of different people, um, you know, and what they want to do and why they want to start a business. Uh, for me, I guess it's part of an extension of who I am. Um, just like the other facets of my life, I want it to be an extension of who I am, you know, my motivation and my work um, to help others and serve others. Uh, just, being able to own your own business, you're able to leverage and maximize the resources um, that you have um, to a different degree than working for someone else. Um, I think that's that's really important to me is just maximizing and leveraging what I have, the resources I have, and who I am. Um, you know, and, and for me, that's in business. Um, so again, the business itself is not the most important thing, but you know, the ultimate goal of a business of impacting and inspiring people. Um, it is what drives me to wanting to be successful in business. Very nice. So what both of you are saying here, we are in business for freedom. Freedom means freedom from uh, all, all kind of uh, like going to eight to five work and be maintained by the work rules. Here Ryan mentioned can have lunch with mom or, you know, finding time to do things like that. So in business is having that control of your life. And that's what you are saying. Both of you said that. And your goal is to serve others. So there is more into it than just money. Uh, so similar thing is, uh, so Juliana, you asked me, uh, how do I find those? Is how do I also apply those? So right now, think about during COVID, we were able to save a lot of time by just going Zoom. My travel time between uh, meeting my clients uh, in, uh, you know, it used to be three hours because, uh, you know, going from one client to another client and meeting the client all included is used to be per client three hours a day. And now that got shot to one hour a day because I can be Zoom jumping from one to another. So. Uh, becoming efficient in using your time. And remember one thing, everybody in, around the world and everywhere else um, have 24 hours a day. No more, no less. Use your time effectively because that's the only thing you're going to have. Uh, and how effectively you use that time uh, is the quality of life you gain because 
that's the most important thing in your life is to enjoy when you can, uh, uh, you know, before you move on to the next life, uh, enjoy the time. So I know uh, there is a lot of questions to be asked and I, I love to have Ryan back again at some point. Uh, Juliana can, um, uh, you know, can you arrange that for us? I can, I can uh, follow up with Ryan and we can talk about that. Yes, and uh, so we want to leave in, uh, with a high note of Ryan uh, playing a music for us again. And uh, we don't want to skip that uh, because that's the quality of life we are looking for. So uh, when, whenever you're ready, Ryan, uh, let us uh, hear a nice tune. And Juliana, thank you very much. And uh, we will see you all again. It was a pleasure to be on the call today. Very much appreciate it. Thank you for the impromptu request to uh, play. Um, so I'm gonna give you guys a quick little treat. So typically when you play classical guitar, so I'm a little close to the camera here. Um, when you play classical guitar, you hold the guitar like this. So you're playing chords like, so let's play like, here comes the sun by the Beatles. So that's that's typically how you play guitar, right? So I want to play a, a, a I'll play like a 30 second snippet before we wrap up um, of a song that I actually learned of playing the guitar like this. You're slapping your, your guitar um, on on the strings. It's really quite quite fascinating. This is a song called Drifting by um, the artist's name is Amy McKee. I'll make sure I was in tune real quick. All right, so here it goes. Tune, but that was pretty cool so that that's called drifting um be happy to play you can go check out his youtube video but it's, guitar is a beautiful instrument and it's a great way to um just relax and um play some good tunes so yeah, hope that was a you. cool little, cool little snippet for you all today and um again it was a pleasure to be on the call i hope you all have a, a blessed wednesday go get after your goals um stay consistent find a good coach and um, i look forward to seeing you guys in the next call okay thank you yeah, thank you very much and thank you for playing that tune for us. You're welcome. Next time.